Hello and welcome to Chase Plastics Chase the Knowledge webinar on styrenic thermoplastics for polymers and the benefits of each. My name is Sherry Cudd and I am the Advertising and Marketing Manager for Chase Plastics. Thank you all for your interest in this webinar and for taking time out of your day to learn about styrenic thermoplastics. A few quick housekeeping items before we begin. Everyone is on mute and will be for the duration of the webinar, but if you'd like to ask a question, you can do so at any time by typing it in the questions section of your toolbar. If you'd rather ask your question, especially if it's a lengthy one, please raise your hand um, using your raise hand uh, option in the toolbar and I will unmute you and call on you to ask your question. In addition to our presenter, Andrea Kendrick, who I'll introduce here in just a moment, we also have Andy Conti, Technical Development Engineer, and Alan Arduini, Vice President of Sales, on hand to answer your questions today. If your question does not get answered right away, we will address it at the end of the webinar. Also, you can access and download PDF copies of this presentation, our product line card, and information on our technical engineering team in the handout section during this presentation. The presentation itself will not be emailed, so if you'd like a copy, please don't download it from the handout section before the webinar concludes. A certificate of completion and recording of the webinar will be emailed to you about an hour after, after the webinar concludes. And we would greatly appreciate it if you could complete the survey at the end of the webinar so that we can improve future ones for you and cover the topics that interest you most. We encourage you to check out past webinars and recordings on our webinars page of our website. While our next webinar is not yet scheduled, once it is, the registration details will be listed on this page and on our social media sites. We're also excited to launch Chase the Knowledge blogs on our website. Uh, it went live today, and our first topic, Is My Dryer's Desiccant Still Working?, is currently live. This and all future blog posts can be found at www.chaseplastics.com blogs. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to our presenter, Andrea Kendrick. Andrea is a technical development engineer with Chase Plastics and has been with us for six years. She received her bachelor's degree in plastics engineering technology from Ferris State University in Michigan. For those of you who have attended Chase the Knowledge webinars in the past, or contacted our technical engineering team for assistance, you're very familiar with Andrea and the level of expertise she brings to the table. So without further ado, Andrea. Good morning, good afternoon to those that are attending. Thank you for joining us. I will get started on the styrenic thermoplastics for polymers and benefits of each. So our agenda for the day, we're gonna go over styrenic overview. we we'll are talk a little bit about morphology and kind of how that relates to these materials we're gonna talk about. We're gonna go over styrenic chemistry. We're gonna go over some advantages and limitations of the four different polymers, styrenic polymers we're gonna talk about. And we'll give some application examples to kind of see it visually what these types of materials go into. So first, a little styrenic overview. So you can see kind of over here on the side, you've got the uh, chemistry of polystyrene. So it contains a phenyl group. They're randomly distributed along the molecular chain. What this means is that giant benzene ring that you see in the chemistry, it inhibits crystal structures from forming. So therefore, our polystyrene materials and variants of it are amorphous materials. So they will be in the amorphous category as we talk about these different materials. And we'll talk a little bit about more what that means if you've not seen me present on that before. So we take our base polystyrene, and then there are copolymers and blends that are then developed from polystyrene. By doing that, we add maybe a different type of rubber, maybe we add another monomer. And because of that, we are able to change the heat resistance of the material. We can affect the impact of the material. We can affect stiffness, chemical resistance, stuff of that nature. We can start to change how it performs uh, by adding different things to it. So the different materials that we're gonna talk about today. So as I mentioned, we did talk a little bit about polystyrene. So a lot of you guys have probably heard the term uh, general purpose polystyrene or crystal styrene. That's the base styrene with no blends, no extra comonomers. And then there's also HIPS, which we aren't talking about today, but it is your 
uh, standard polystyrene with some rubber in it to add a little bit to the impact. So that's what we call it a high impact polystyrene. So the ones today, however, we're gonna talk about are gonna be the ABS materials, your acrylonitrile, butadiene, styrene. We're gonna talk about acrylonitrile, styrene, acrylate, so ASA. We'll talk about methyl methacrylate ABS or MABS, which is our transparent ABS. And then we're also gonna talk about styrene acrylonitrile, SAN. So we'll talk about each of these individually, their limitations and some key features about them. So a little bit of morphology review. We just mentioned that our styrenes are gonna be amorphous material. So if you've not seen this slide before, thermoplastics in general are generally uh, either gonna be semi-crystalline or amorphous. There is technically LCPs, which are your li liquid crystalline polymers. We don't talk about them as much because they're kind of their own unique group. But so semi-crystalline materials, they have dense, tightly pass packed regions known as crystals. And then your amorphous materials, it means A, without, and then morphous having shape or structure it's without structure so there's not that there's not those regions of crystallinity in your amorphous materials so what does that mean how does that affect our materials so if we're looking at amorphous materials they have random structure we just mentioned they're typically transparent now this will be a point that i will make throughout this conversation is typically they are your polycarbonates are your general purpose polystyrenes are abs is not asa is not we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it but generally speaking, they are. There's a gradual softening point. They have their glass transition temperature, so that's that kind of big thermal position for those materials. They shrink less, uh, and then they have better dimensional stability because of that, because there's less shrinkage, less movement in the tool. And the reason I wanted to bring this up as well is because we're talking about all amorphous materials in this particular webinar. So some of these key features I'm not gonna touch upon. Again, just know that because they are amorphous, they're gonna shrink less. Because they are amorphous, they're gonna have better dimensional stability. So I'm not gonna necessarily point that out for each individual material. And then your semi-crystalline materials, are gonna be highly structured, they're typically opaque, they have a sharp melting point, they have a, a melting temperature that amorphous materials do not. They tend to shrink more, which then because of that affects their dimensional stability a little bit. And then they also have greater chemical resistance, wear and fatigue properties. And I point that out a little bit is because I will talk about chemical resistance a tad during the presentation. So just know that in generally speaking, when I say that it's you know moderate or okay chemical resistance, comparing it to a semi-crystalline, the semi-crystalline is typically gonna win out. On, on chemical resistance. All right, so now we're gonna get into the materials themselves. So we'll start with ABS. So ABS is a tur polymer, meaning three. So acrylonitrile, butadiene, and styrene. And what happens is when I take all those three different monomers and I change the amount of each within the material, I can start to affect the different properties. So ABS has a wide range of performance based on how I structure my ABS material. So the different features and the different monomers within it give it different properties. So the acrylonitrile in ABS gives it improved chemical resistance, gives it better heat resistance, helps with tensile strength, so makes it a little bit of a stronger material. The butadiene, which is a rubber, we'll talk about it quite a bit. There's some other materials that contain it. Uh, it helps with the toughness, as you can imagine, Rubber is going to help with the impact. Helps with low temperature toughness because it's got a low TG. So it's going to help in low temperature performance. And then impact resistance, which kind of just gets grouped in with toughness. So your impact's better when you have more butadiene in the material. It also helps allow the material to be platable, which is one of those things we'll talk about as an advantage. And then styrene is going to help with the luster, the processability, so it flows nicely. You can process it pretty well. And then the rigidity of it. So as you can imagine, if we up the amount of butadiene, we get a tougher, higher impact grade of ABS. If we shove that out for more acrylonitrile, maybe we have a higher resistant ABS. So in terms of ABSs, you might see them uh, marketed as a high temperature one. It probably has a higher level of acrylonitrile. You might see a really high impact ABS, or maybe we call it a super tough ABS. It's gonna have more butadiene. So again, we can change around the amount of monomer in each that helps us get to different performance levels. Uh, so I have put together these slides that have kind of a, a little grouping of the performance of each material. So to start, we'll talk about, I have morphology in there. As we know, I've already mentioned, these are all going to be amorphous materials, but I include the glass transition temperature, 105C. So if you guys have listened to any of my presentations in the past, glass transition temperature is a huge thermal point within a material. If you go past that for an amorphous material, you're past its its usefulness range. Once you get past the TG, you're gonna lose all your properties. So it kind of becomes a little bit of a limiting factor when you're talking about the environmental heat that the material is gonna see. So 105C for glass transition. Um, appearance, 
ABS is an opaque uh, material. It is not transparent. We talked about amorphous materials tend to be transparent. It is not transparent because of the butadiene. So the butadiene causes it to have an opaque appearance. So you'll have a non-see-through material. It's also very glossy. So when you're talking about just in general, standard ABS has a very glossy appearance to it. So what does that mean? What does it kind of look like? So your standard ABS is if you were to take it and do a measurement on the glass reading level at a 45 degree, you're looking at about a, a reading of about 94-ish, 90, 93, 94-ish. Uh, the high gloss options, there are actual high gloss options of ABS, only gets you to about a 97. So not a huge change, uh, but they are they do have higher gloss options. And then to really get an understanding of what that means, when you compare it to a low gloss option, they're anywhere from 30 to 70. So you can see the difference between a standard, very glossy ABS at a 94, high gloss at a 97, and then your low gloss grades that are in the 30 to 70 range. So huge, again, big performance uh, range, as well as a gloss range. But in general, when you're working with a general purpose ABS grade, it's going to have a glossy appearance. So just know that if that's something that you don't want in your material, you'll have to go for a low gloss option. Chemical resistance, we call it moderate. Uh, UV resistance, very poor. The butadiene in ABS uh, does not hold up well to UV exposure. So anytime we go to work on a part, any type of project, as soon as it's gonna see outside, as soon as it's gonna see UV, we immediately try to take it out of ABS. It's not gonna perform well, it's gonna discolor quickly. It's something we try to keep it out. The exception to that, and, and we might talk about it a little bit later, is if you're gonna plate it, so then it's no longer, the ABS portion's no longer being exposed to UV. But just be aware, very poor. Anytime you hear UV, automatically throw ABS out the door. We don't wanna see it in ABS. There's other sirenic options, which we're gonna talk about ASA, which we would try to probably push you into. And then heat resistance, so good up to ADC. This is kind of like a continuous use thing. We wanna be ADC or below. Again, you can get closer to 105, but you're gonna start losing some of your properties. Some of your uh, strength, stiffness will start to be lost as it starts to get closer to that G TG. Some advantages and limitations of ABS, impact toughness. We talked about it, huge range. The more butadiene we put in it, the better impact it's gonna get. We can go all the way from a, you know, one foot pounds per inch IZOD, all the way up to eight, nine, 10. So good impact. It's also lightweight compared to other engineering resins. So ABS kind of teeters on the edge of commodity engineering type product. But if you're comparing it to other engineering resins like your PCs and um, your nylons, stuff like that, it has, it's much lighter. So if that becomes important to you, the lightweight of the material, then it's a good option. It's only at 1.05, your PCs at you know, 1.2 nylons or 1.14, so much lower. High gloss inherently, and then as I mentioned, there are low gloss grades, but just inherently it's high gloss, so if that's an advantage, you want it to have a nice shiny appearance, perfect. Uh, ABS is also platable, which is great if you want it to be lightweight for a car maybe, and then you wanna plate it so the UV doesn't attack it, excellent. Then you get best of both worlds. You can have it outside and have it be light, so it works out great. It also has decent scratch resistance. So generally speaking, it'll perform a little bit better than you know if you were to compare it to a PC. So just keep that in mind. The limitations, relatively low service temperature compared to other engineering resins. It's not gonna perform as well as a PC. It's not gonna get as hot. Uh, so that's kind of limited there. But if you're not in the range where it's outside of its capabilities, then you're okay. Uh, poor resistance to polar solvents, your ketones type products, acetone, stuff like that, it does not perform well. So if it's coming in contact with that, we're gonna try to get out of ABS. And then as we always already mentioned, terrible UV performance. So UV, XNA on the ABS. So some applications that you've seen everyday life that you can make the connection to, uh, vacuum housings, coffee and radio housings, computer, printer, and copier housings. Those are typically in FR ABSs, so you can get FR grades. Um, automotive interior parts or exterior, maybe if they're plated some piping and fittings, if you need your NSF approvals for those, we've got materials like that. Refrigerator liners, hard shelled luggage, a lot of times is ABS. Uh, and then Legos is a big one. Everyone can relate to Legos. Legos are typically made out of ABS. So good colorability, good performance. All right, now we're gonna talk about acrylonitrile styrene acrylate, so ASA. So ASA in general is a copolymer styrene acrylonitrile, so your SAN, reinforced with an acrylic rubber. 
so different rubber in this case. It has excellent environmental resistance and is therefore the ideal choice for outdoor applications. So we no longer have the butadiene that you do with the ABS, you have an acrylic rubber and it performs excellent in UV. So again, quick little table on what we're going over. It is amorphous, glass transition of 100. It is opaque as well. So like the ABS, it is also opaque and it also has a glossy appearance. So standard would be glossy. You could get a low gloss option, same as ABS if need be. Chemical resistance, we give it a moderate score as well. But UV resistance, here's the big one. It's excellent. It performs very well. As soon as we hear UV, we throw out the ABS and we sub it in for the ASA. It performs very well. And then heat resistance up to about 70 C. So some advantages and limitations, high gloss, again, similar to the ABS, you can get low gloss if needed. And then the excellent retention of color and gloss when prolonged exposure to sunlight. So the UV is the huge feature here, UV all day with ASA. It also withstands hot water treatment and wax, it's the wax layer removal from new vehicles or a lot of car washes. So they'll use it for like grills and stuff when it's gonna see the hot water treatments and the wax. Uh, because it will stand the UV and then also the hot water treatments. The limitations, again, similar. You might see a theme here, relatively low surface temperature compared to other engineering resins, and then also poor resistance to polar uh, solvents. So similar as the ABS. So some applications that you'll see ASA in, so in mirror housings, radiator grills, window frames, lawnmower components, you kind of see a theme here. It's got the good UV, it's gonna be in parts that are gonna require that. You might see them in antenna, some irrigation fitting, some solar panel components, so stuff where it you need to kind of perform like an ABS, but need the UV, we would put ASA in. Next, we're gonna talk about methyl methacrylate ABS or MABS, so this is your transparent ABS. So the methyl methacrylate is added to a standard ABS matrix. This is used to match the refractive index of the butadiene rubber that's in the ABS uh, substrate to help to allow the material to be transparent. So when we're talking about the different matrices, you can kind of see that on the two different pictures, your standard ABS, uh, you have these little, what I've been told look like little germs. <laughs> They're actually the butadienes uh, within the matrix. So the AS matrix is your acrylonitrile styrene matrix and then the butadiene within it, so it's your ABS. So if you look, as the light comes through these little arrows, you'll see that it kind of scatters because the refractive index of that matrix is 1.572 compared to the butadiene, which has a refractive index of 1.516. So when it hits it, it bounces it in a different direction because they're not the same. So that's why you have a opaque material when you're talking ABS versus having something that's transparent. So what happens is when we add the methyl methacrylate to the ABS matrix, it matches then the refractive index of the butadiene rubber at 1.516. Uh, and so it allows it to not bounce off and refract in a different direction. And so you're allowed and it gives you a clear material. So now you can see through it. And so, and then the other thing to note here is it is a clear material, but some things to just kind of keep track of if you've ever ran it or seen it ran before is that we get complaints sometimes they say, oh, it's, it's kind of hazy, you know, when they process it it's because it might be, it, it is affected by the temperature. So you gotta kind of let the temperature get back down to more room temperature and it will start to clear up. So if you've ever processed it and then you're kind of, oh my gosh, it's not as clear as I expected. It's probably because it's still a little warm. So once it reaches your room temperature, it'll have more of that, that clear appearance that you're looking for. Um, and so the table of contents, if you will, for this particular material, it is amorphous, glass transition of 105. The appearance is transparent. So this is where it's a little different than the last two materials we talked about. You get up to 90% transmission. So pretty good. You're up there kind of with the PC levels. It's very clear material. Chemical resistance, moderate. UV resistance, still poor. You still have the butadiene, still not great. We still don't want to see it outdoors. And then heat resistance, similar, ADC. Some advantages and limitations, the huge advantage here is that it's transparent. So if you like the performance of an ABS, but it's just not clear, this would be where we'd take you. We'd put you in an MABS. It has good impact and toughness. Again, that butadiene in there helps with its impact and its, its performance there. Still lightweight, still lightweight material, uh, high gloss and good scratch. So similar concept to the ABS, just it's clear. Um, and so, and then the limitations are similar. Lower service temperature, ADC. We're not gonna put it in a really high temperature, uh, 
application, poor resistance to polar, and then also the UV, again, not great. Some applications you might see it in, toothbrush holder, rat cage, sight glasses, some dental trays, vacuum cleaner components, the kind of the see-through canisters maybe, uh, point of purchase displays, soap dispenser windows. The, and then the thing to keep in mind is similar to PC, they do tend to have tints. So MABS, naturally speaking, is gonna have a straw tint or a yellow tint to it. And then they do have grades available that will have more of the blue tint. Those are kind of the standard ones, your straw and your blue tint. And then there's also the availability or the option to have them colored to any kind of tint. If you want a smoke tint or a fun red tint or what have you, it can be done. But standard, it's gonna either have a yellow tint if nothing's been done to it, or a blue tint if they put some dye in it, and those are kind of your standard colors. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about SAN. So this is styrene acrylonitrile. So styrene, styrene acrylonitrile is the copolymer of styrene and acrylonitrile, imagine that. It has outstanding transparency and high strength and chemical resistance, making it ideal for the sanitary market. It's a base material, so you use your standard SAN, styrene acrylonitrile, and you add the different rubbers, and that's how you make your ABS and your ASA. So this is kind of the base. And this would be then the blend of your polystyrene with the acrylonitrile. And if you remember when we talked about acrylonitrile, the component of ABS, that adds the chemical, the heat, and the tensile performance. So if you're comparing it to a straight general purpose polystyrene, you're going to see an increase in chemical performance, heat performance, and, and your strength and stiffness a little bit. So the table of contents for this particular grade, again, it is amorphous. All of these are amorphous materials. The glass transition is around 105. It is transparent. So our first two materials we talked about, ABS and ASA, are not transparent. They're opaque, glossy. SAN and um, MABS are transparent up to your about 90% transmission. So again, similar to kind of your PCs. Uh, chemical resistance is moderate. The UV resistance is we call it, I call it poor, uh, but it is a little bit better than the ABS because it doesn't have the butadiene in there. It's still not great, but it's a little bit better. And then heat resistance, about 80 C. So again, real good theme across the board for these, not really much higher than 70 or 80 C for any of these materials. Some advantages of SAN, the high transparency, 90% transmission, high rigidity. It is dishwasher safe, so they use them a lot in you know, glassware or, um, plates, serving bowls that need to be clear, high gloss, and then again, same same pattern across the board, low service temperature. You're going to see poor solvent, uh, polar solvent uh, resistance, and then the impact and elongation is not so great. So as you saw with the materials that had the rubber in them, they saw an increase in impact and toughness as their advantage. Because this doesn't have any of the rubber, it's not gonna have very good impact and it's not gonna have very good elongation. Same with if we go all the way back to a general purpose polystyrene, because it doesn't have any rubber at all, it's gonna have really poor impact, really poor elongation. And then when you add rubber to it, hips or other portions of it, like your ABS, ASA, much better impact. So some applications you'll see SAN in because it's very clear and dishwasher safe. You're gonna see it in a lot of tumbler applications, some cups, serving bowls, cosmetic cases, maybe some spice jars, point of purchase displays, lenses. So those are very common, very clear. But once you, if you get into the point where you're gonna need better impact, again, this material has poor impact. We're not putting it in SAN if that's a requirement. So just something to keep in mind. So we kind of did the table across the board for all of them. So I wanted to put them together in a nice concise little table for everyone so you can look across the board and see it. Again, morphology, amorphous. There's no crystalline structure. It's gonna be uh, not as good chemically, but it's gonna be much better dimensionally if you're worried about that, much better with shrink. Generally in the, I'd say three to seven thou range for shrink edge. There are some stipulations on that, but that's pretty standard. And then your glass transition, so kind of your heat performance across the board, you pretty much see 100, 105 C is standard for these styrenic grades. And then the appearance, we talked about the big differentiators here. Your ABS and ASA are opaque. So if you need something that's clear, those aren't gonna do it for you. Your MABS and your SAN are transparent, very good transparency. Chemical resistance, kind of across the board, we just kind of went with moderate. It's okay. 
It's not the best. If there's particular chemicals that your part's going to come in contact, we always recommend that you work with your salesperson or your tech person to figure out if it's going to be a problem with whatever material you're looking at. And then the UV performance, as you can see across the board, with the exception of ASA, all of these serenics are not so great. Not putting it in UV. Then you have ASA. So if you need it, you like the performance of ABS, need the UV, ASA is a great option for you. The other thing that's nice about all these different materials, your ABSs and your ASAs, they also, if you need a little bit better heat performance um, and impact maybe, they can be blended with PC. So you have PC ABS alloys, you have PC ASA alloys, that would be PC ASA good for UV with a little bit better heat. And then you have PC ABS that gives you a little bit better heat. Still not great on the UV because the ABS component, but those are options that you can, you'll see out there. And then the heat resistance, like I mentioned, and across the board, 70, 80 C, not great. So if you have a higher performance one, we're looking probably at a different material. And with that, that's all I had for you guys. I wanted to give a nice, quick, concise review of these materials. You've probably seen them, you've probably heard about them, but maybe didn't necessarily understand the differences between them. So I hope that with this presentation that you'll receive and you've been listening to kind of helps answer some of those questions that what is the difference between all of these different cyrenic options that are out there? Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. That was a great uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, so at this time, if you have any questions, please type them in the questions section. I see we have a few up here. Or you can raise your hand and I will unmute your microphone uh, when we're ready to call on you. Once again, uh, just real quick, if you want to download the handouts, now would be the time to do so before the webinar ends, especially Andrea's great presentation. You might wanna have that information on hand for the future. As a reminder, as you type your questions, uh, please complete the survey at the end of this webinar. Your responses will definitely help us shape future Chase the Knowledge webinars. <clears throat> and as always, we welcome your feedback. Also, as mentioned, please be sure to check out our new blog page at chaseplastics.com slash blogs. And past and future recordings and announcements of webinars can be found at chaseplastics.com slash webinars. So again, just raise your hand if you have a question and I'm just going to read off the ones that we have typed here first. Um, Paul asks, what makes the UV resistance of ASA better than SAN, better than SAN? I'll oh, go I'll, ahead. No, <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Andy. You could answer that one. I'll comment on this one. Um, some of it is expectation. Uh, with SAN, you are using SAN more for its clarity, and SAN is going to yellow. Um, it, it'll also drop an impact, but it's not really starting out so high. Uh, ABS, on the other hand, or not ABS, ASA, on the other hand, uh, you are using it for its toughness as well. And because it is uh, not transparent, it will stand up and it'll maintain its, uh, its properties much better. Uh, so that's sort of why we consider ASA a good UV resistant and SAN, um, you, you know, better than ABS, but, but still relatively poor. Um, hopefully that answers your question. All right, the next question comes from, and I'm, I know I'm going to mispronounce your name, and I'm sorry, Naran, Naranjan, how different is ABS from PCABS? So the difference would be when you take your ABS and the standard expectation and performance of that particular material, and then you take the expectation and the performance of your PC, and then you combine them and you start to get kind of like a, a middle ground between them. So your ABS has limited heat performance as we talked about. So your 80-ish C is kind of where you, you're gonna be. Your PCs have a much higher performance in the 120s, 130s-ish range. So when you have an alloy of the two, you see a better performance out of the, the blend of the PC ABS versus the standard ABS. And then some other things that come into play as well, the impact, stuff like that. But generally speaking, it helps with the heat performance of it. And then the other thing too is because it has the ABS component, you're likely to see a potential for a little bit higher gloss and material versus a standard PC. It's no longer going to be clear. So PC by itself is clear. Once you add the ABS to it because of the refractive index and kind of how we talked about that in the presentation a little bit, it's no longer clear. So if I don't know if anyone had that as an expectation, but it's no longer clear. But it does help with the heat performance. But then if you take, if you're looking at PC, it brings the heat performance down because of the ABS component. So you're kind of meeting in the middle between the two. 
another comment okay. on that another comment on that would be that pc abs um actually does improve a little bit on the cold temperature impact uh it is a little bit better than polycarb in some cases better than abs it certainly doesn't extend really, really cold. To get really outstanding cold temperature performance, you need to go to a poly, uh, polycarbonate copolymer. All right. The next question comes from Patricia. She says, hi, Andrea, very informative presentation. Thank you so much. A quick question. Do you have any chart on price comparison on these four polymers? Thanks. I do not, but there the seller could absolutely put something like that together for for her. So I I don't know if maybe you want to send a note to your particular seller, but that's something that they could do for you, no problem. And Patricia, this is Alan Arduini, uh, representing sales on this call. Thank you very much for attending. Generally speaking, the SAN would be the lowest cost of the four materials talked about today, followed by the uh, ABS, followed by the MABS or the or the clear what we call the clear ABS and the ASA the SAN and the ABS uh, uh, there there would be a difference in the pricing and then the uh, the clear ABS and the ASA are a little closer together but generally speaking that's how they rank uh, in their in their general purpose form the other thing that we might comment on there are different types of ABSs there's uh, even though they're not considered high heat materials, there are things that you add, I believe it's more acrylonitrile to make the ABS a little higher heat. So there's, in, in the case, once you get out of the general purpose ABS and you get it into the high heat ABS and or the flame retardant ABS or options for various colors, uh, the prices are, are reflected by that based, based a lot on the, uh, the particular derivative and also the, the volume that you're ordering. But your Chase Plastics account manager would be happy to talk about all those options with you. And Alan, while we have you, Enrico has a similar question. Can you provide a price range comparison for the materials? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. I saw Enrico's question. And, and here's what I'd like to say on that, generally speaking. Um, you know, where we were, uh, pandemic, post-pandemic, but before the checkmark recovery, before all this craziness uh, started with uh, shortages of materials, generally speaking, back in the old days, say Halloween-ish, you know, uh, of last year, you're talking about the SAN would possibly be in the, in the right volumes in the 80s, 80 cent per pound, and then you'd work your way up to $1.60 or more when you work through the materials with SAN leading general purpose ABS being higher, and then you get into the clears and the ASA. Uh, the prices on these materials, along with a lot of other materials, have jumped uh, 50 to 80% uh, during all during this crisis of a shortage of materials. So they're, they're much higher numbers now. So hopefully that helps give you a little idea of what they were and they need, need to kind of multiply those those prices, like I say, by 1.5 up to about 1.8 roughly. Again, uh, talk to your local representative and they'll be happy to quote the particular price based on the, on the volume. And as you guys probably know, and I'll just touch on the availability of, of the Styrenix. They're all in very, very high demand and lead times around the world have been affected. So uh, the lead times of these materials in our general purpose form went from readily available, we could ship them in a day or two because we were always stocking them in very high volume, to the, the lead times on them uh, are restricted. Uh, if, it, if it's not an existing customer in an existing application, there's, there's some real limitations. We're very hopeful that uh, those conditions will get better as the supply and demand curves start to come closer together. And also, it's our understanding that there'll be more capacity coming on uh, the start of next year. So hopefully that will help out also. But there is definitely a, a real very, very, very tight supply on these styrenic materials at this time. Okay, we have another question from Naran Jan. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, but the question is why GF ABS is difficult to make as compared to making GF PP, GF nylons? This is Andy. Um, I would comment on that 
primarily by saying that the glass filled propylene, the glass filled nylons, since those are semi crystalline materials, uh, they, they, uh, w when you're compounding, they go to a lower viscosity. So glass will generally, uh, it's generally easier to, to, to mix the glass in. You can certainly mix uh, glass into ABS, you can mix glass into polycarbonate, but generally it can be more difficult because again, those materials don't have a sharp melting point. Uh, they only tend to sort of get softer. So that would be the primary reason I would say. All right, thanks, Andy. Jerry has a question. What is the recyclability of these materials? Uh, you can do it uh, as far as recycling code and putting them out there. It doesn't have its own for these unless you're working with general purpose polystyrene. So your ABS and stuff, now that you've added in other portions of it, it is now under the other section. So depending on where you're working and, and what they want to take, that's for a consumer standpoint, you have to label it separate versus like a propylene or a standard polystyrene that has their own recycle code. As far as introducing them back in to your process, like all materials, it can be done. And it just depends. We generally try to tell everyone to stay under about 25% is pretty standard uh, to do it. 25% regrind, 75% virgin. Um, but then it also comes down mostly to your project, what kind of properties you're getting out of it, and what starts to become a problem when you're seeing it. So it just, depending on which version of the answer you wanted for that question, it's other for recycling for consumers, and then can be done fairly easy enough as regrind back into your process. Okay, Justin asks, how does indoor UV lights in stores affect products made in ABS? MASB or SAN that may sit on the shelf for an extended period of time? The answer would be it does affect it. Um, it's not as great as getting straight UV rays from being outside and being in the atmosphere, but it will start to yellow and discolor them. If you've had, you know, like a thermostat housing that you've had in your house for a long period of time, you will might notice that it starts to yellow it does affect it. Same with interior parts as well. Even though it's filtered sunlight, it's still going to affect it. Not as quickly uh, because it's not direct, but it still will affect it and it will still cause it to yellow. All right, and I see Eugene Yang has a question typed here, but he also has his hand raised. So Eugene, I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna ask your question and feel free to also ask the question that you typed as I'm not sure if it's the same question or not. Eugene, are you there? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, you 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 can just uh, read my questions. I, okay. Yeah, thank you. So Eugene's question is uh, difference between MABS and MBS. This is Andy. Um, the A, <laughs> acrylonitrile. Uh, being serious though, uh, the difference in performance there would be uh, the chemical resistance. Uh, MBS would not have as good. Uh, chemical resistance as an MABS material there. Uh, in fact, I've seen reports that uh, sometimes add in as little bit as 4% of um, acrylonitrile can significantly improve resistance against greases and all. So that is a testament to uh, how the acrylonitrile can help there. All right, and Nick asks, what distinguishes the SAN as dishwasher safe since they all have about the same TG heat resistance? So depending on which dishwasher we are using, there is a difference between your commercial and your res uh, your commercial and your residential based on the heat and stuff like that. Um, that is that's kind of in there more for showing that it would show a little bit better performance versus like a general purpose polystyrene because of the acrylonitrile giving it a little bit better heat performance. Um, and so you can, in, in some cases, depending, I guess, on the dishwasher, the temperature it's gonna see, there is the possibility of putting the other materials in there as well. But that's one of the big features of it and why it's used so readily for like dishware and stuff like that. All right, great. Harshid asked, which plastic material is used in motorbike helmets, windshield glass? I am asking this because it has good visibility and also UV resistance. I would say most of the time it's probably going to be a polycarbonate material. 
or some variant maybe of it because um, of the really good impact. So the impact on your polycarbonates are going to be in the 10, 11, 12-ish range of foot pounds per inch IZOD compared to these clear materials like your SANs that are going to have within a one IZOD. So it's you wouldn't want to have a nice visor to protect your face and then have it made, be made out of SAN, get hit, and then it ruins it. The other thing too is that the tints in like the MABS, because it will have a little bit better impact, it's going to be fairly tinted. So if you want it to be crystal clear with no tint, generally you'd move to like a PC type material for the better impact and the better clarity with no tint. I would also guess that it might have, it probably does have some kind of a hard coat on it too. Uh, the silicon hard coats that are a uh, post process do improve the UV resistance as well as the chemical resistance of ABS, oh, I'm sorry, uh, polycarbonate. All right, great. Rich asks, are there several styrenics that have NSF61 approvals or are options with NSF61 approvals limited? Uh, it, you said NSF61? Yes. Yes, yeah, so there would be options there. It would just be finding the particular grade that had been made by the manufacturer that then went through the process of getting it approved. So they do have that NSF61. Um, more commonly, we see a lot of ABS in NSF 14 for piping. That's why there was a lot for the piping and fittings. Uh, but there are some grades that would have 51 and 61 as well. All right. And the next three questions here are from Mindy. Uh, her first question is, how do the different polymers affect over moldability? So ABS type products and styrenics are polar. So when you go to overmold them, you have to use a TPE product that's going to be able to chemically bond to a polar substrate. So they have to be specially, they have to be special. If you're talking TPE or TPV type products, they have to be specially formulated to overmold onto them, unless you don't mind that they won't chemically bond. In which case, a mechanical interlock is is designed into the parts, so then it doesn't really matter per se. But because these these materials are polar there is a special formulation that has to be utilized for a TPE to overmold onto. You won't take a standard TPE or TPV SAR link type product and then just overmold onto ABS and expect a chemical bond. It won't happen. All right then. Mindy's next question is, I notice a lot of the answers to the UV impact has to do with discoloration. Does UV exposure have a significant impact on dimensions, warpage, material properties? Not so much as uh, warpage per se, that might be more of a function if it gets maybe too hot and the material can start to move on a molecular level. Uh, but yes, you would start to affect the performance um, property wise as well. Uh, so it really comes down to when you're looking at something like that and you're looking for a product that's gonna be outside is to start to distinguish what becomes important to you as far as if there's a limit on properties and where there can see a little deterioration from it. Uh, but a lot of times it's just a perception thing where if you have a part outside and all of a sudden it's turning yellow, you think that it's degraded or it's bad or you don't want it. So a lot of times when we talk about it, we talk about a Delta E color change as the problem. So when you look at data for UV, a lot of times that's the big driving factor, but there can be performance problems as well. In my general experience, I would say that uh, the yellow in is typically what, what you term the canary in the coal mine. You'll typically see yellow in first, um, and that, that's an indication that something's happening on the surface. Probably the next thing in, in general you'd see would be a loss in impact, and probably lastly would be tensile strength. That's sort of been my general experience in terms of uh, how UV is affecting these. Okay, and Mindy's last question is, what are the effects of overdrying, and what would be considered overdrying for polystyrenes? So polystyrene by itself, um, not ABS or not SAN, not any of these, um, is non-hygroscopic, so it doesn't necessarily need to be dried. Um, unless you have maybe a surface moisture issue, you bring it inside and it's got some condensation on it. These other materials, however, your ABSs, MABSs, they do uh, absorb some moisture. Over drying in terms of if you're talking about familiarity with over drying nylon, um, it, it, it comes down more to if you leave it in something that's 
too hot or even if it's the right temperature for drying it, you leave it for too long, you can start to affect it. You just start to degrade the material a little bit. There's not a uh, range for moisture like there is with the nylon where you want to keep it within a certain range. But I mean, if you put this material in to dry it and you leave it for three days, you're going to have a problem. It's going to start to degrade, potentially some additives within it. Maybe it might become a little more brittle. There's some things that can happen on a molecular level if you're putting too much heat for too long on the material. Okay, Naranjan has uh, one more question here. How does styrene block copolymers like K-resin position against sand, MABS, and MBS? So K-resin would be because of the, um, the, the elastomer within it, you're going to see uh, it's going to be a, a more impact TPE type product, different hardnesses. Um, so SAN in particular, it's going to be way better in impact and, and much more of a, a a more flexible type product. So SAN is is a lot more brittle than the other ones. Um, MABS, similar concept. It's more of a, thought of more of a TPE type product. Um, and then an ABS. So uh, SBC is also clear. So when you're comparing to ABS, it's not a clear resin anymore. And maybe Andy probably has a few more comments on the differences as well. Well, I, I would just comment that probably the, the, the key thing is, again, the acrylonitrile content in the SAN and the MABS, which, again, is going to help the chemical resistance. That would probably uh, be it. In fact, uh, I think in refrigerators, I'm not sure if they actually used any uh, any of the K resins, but I know that, like I said, that that is sort of one of the reasons with the refrigerants that, um, that they do use ABS there because the acrylonitrile gives better resistance against the freons. Okay, and our final question of the day, it looks like, comes from Enrico. Would you consider it okay to treat parts made with MMBS with isopropyl alcohol? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. Annie, perhaps you do. I'm not generally sure about MMBS. I know that uh, alcohols typically in ABS can be trouble. Okay, we will leave it with that. Uh, so once again, we would like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend this Chase the Knowledge webinar. We hope it was informative and a great return on the investment of your time. If you have any technical questions that did not get answered today, feel free to reach out to Andrea directly. Her information is posted on your screen. Once again, thank you all for attending, and we hope to see you at our next Chase the Knowledge webinar.